I also so like Gisborne's really <laughs> haven't been a um uh, a spot that's that I've sort of thought that's a that that's a no no. It's it's like Vegas. It's a destination. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just the art that they're coming for. It's the experience of mm. that. And you know, I, I I'm still romantic about exhibition openings and bringing people into an audience and social networks and da da da. All that aside, connecting to people in the flesh and putting them in front of a work and and being able to sort of let them engage, you know, properly with the work. I think that's where we're we're starting to re-educate ourselves as well about mm. how how to look. We're starting to look again, I think. The recession's been quite good for that. It's kind I of think so. filtered out a lot of that. But um, you know, the the reason I do what I do in Gisborne is because of these guys. You know, I, I can be anywhere at once and the motivation comes from, hey look, let's do this and let's go here and let's show this and we're doing this and and it's really easy and Gisborne's actually a great place to do it from. You can stage it there, set it all up there and, and get a really good honest start to something and then and then move it and tour yeah. it and and do things like that and build it and, and with the gallery comes you know the photography, the design, the publishing it's all one package so we can do it all in house and I think that, that gives us the mobility if you like mm. to be able to explore you know the shift in, in what an art dealer does or what a public gallery offers or how a curator does things Well and that's sort of, because we've been having a lot of discussions along these lines the last you know, couple of months and um, it sort of feels like you know the next couple of years it's going to be about doing that isn't it, setting yeah. up really kick-ass shows and having them packaged in a way that everything's there, um, documentation, you know, video interviews, the work, everything's there, it can be packaged up and sent off and toured around New Zealand and go to public spaces and you make it a no-brainer for the curators, everything's there and um, you know, that, that to me, that's the way to go. So you put on fantastic shows and then you take them around the country. You build them for other people. And then you bring people on board in different regions and the show morphs and changes and then you get curators interested, you get things written up and um, then you're reaching a national audience and an international audience, obviously. And, um, and it's in that sense, like, gives us an advantage because you haven't got the overheads. You can really focus on putting on the best show possible without worrying about all that other bullshit and, um, and then make it even stronger and then get it out there and put it in the hands of curators mm -hmm. and make it a no-brainer. And, I mean, you guys have done that. Mm -hmm. So well, Maddie Cooper's had 33 touring for two years now, mm -hmm. and um, and then you know we've got a show coming up in November, and um, that's coming down and going up to the par in December, so um, that's going to be hopefully the start of a New Zealand tour for that mm -hmm. show. You know, get it over the line somewhere like the par, and then it has a bit of provenance, and then other you know regional um, public mm -hmm. galleries are going to jump on board because it's already had a showing in somewhere like the par, and um, you're away. You know, you're also yeah. looking like you're looking at not just that show. You're looking two years, oh, five years ahead. Like the whole the whole time, you've got this future vision of where you need to be and how you need to pro yeah. project that. So it's not it's not just a one hit show wonder. You know, like for instance, the art fair. Matt and I have been working on this for eighteen months almost. Mm. You know, through the conversation off the back of the last one, and that that builds up and that builds into something quite unique. And you you're always trying to amp up and elevate that that presentation or that particular show or those works and, and the whole performance side of things, you you want to sort of keep m moving it in a way that it, it evolves your work and it evolves the, the profile of the gallery and, mm -hmm. and of the artist. See this is, I, I, through working more closely with Matty, especially now that we're doing Gizzy, like to me, without blowing smoke, he's the example of you know what what's really happening now, like Matty's at the forefront and this is, you know, I, I see um, what Matty's talking about now, we're having this plan and you've got like, you're always working on a strategy two, three, four years ahead and how you're going to get to that point and you know, what, what do we need to do, uh, what you know, do we need to cross off to get from here to there and having that sort of strategy and not being bound to these sort of four walls of the gallery space, thinking way beyond that, you know, that's just the kind of catalyst and then what else do we need to do and you know, to me Matty's like the kind of dealer that's sort of really at the forefront of that in New Zealand and um, mm. you know, and that comes out of I guess being um, in something like Gisborne, thinking, having to think outside the box. You know, you can't just rest on your laurels and think, oh, well, so and so curator or collector is going to walk in the door this week because, you know, they're it doesn't not. happen, yeah. So, um, but, you know, I think that's, that is an example of, you know, where a lot more dealers are going to be at in the next two, three years. That's probably already happening a lot more, than, you know, like mm. in the States, but it hasn't sort of filtered through New Zealand yet because, as we've seen, and, you know, something we talk about the art dealer. The proliferation of art fairs and, and social media and so on is changing the landscape of the commercial gallery space, and um, you know I think 
the, the dealers and the curators are going to have to catch up with that you know, really mm -hmm. quickly. And I think Maddie's like two, three, four steps ahead of the game here yeah, in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of dissolving of, you know, the monotony of the four-week yeah. shows and, mm. you know, your... You've got to be more dynamic than that. Yeah, yeah. your yeah. six solo artist shows from yeah. a stable that's quite rigid and, I mean, that, that's kind of dissolving very slowly. Yeah. I mean, mm. there's a lot more kind of spectacle-based yeah. um, exhibitions happening because of the logistics of art fairs and... Which know, is a good and bad thing, you know, I think... Yeah. Um, I mean, it becomes too to much. To see artworks, you know. Yeah, and I'm always a bit concerned about art becoming too much about spectacle and entertainment, um, and you know, not enough about substance and rigor and, and uh, pushing sort of conceptual Tell boundaries and making people think. And, yeah. and I mean, that's always going to be the undercurrent of what we do and what artists do. But I think you know, we've got to be a little bit concerned about that because it is. I see it as far too much as spectacle, and art fairs have got a little bit to answer for in that respect because. It's such a visual bombardment. I mean, you have to do things to sort of stand out, and so often, you know, people revert to kind of different strategies instead of showing like very difficult paintings or whatever it may be. It's like a bit more immediate, grab people's attention. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously not in all cases, and I think sometimes it, you can buck the trend, and that can have an advantage. Like you're in a fair, and it's so full on, and there's so much going on, and you walk into a stand, and it's quiet, and it's considered, and it's calm, and it makes you think, and it makes you stop. And, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think you have to be really smart about those sort of strategies now because it is changing. But that, I mean, that depends on the audience as well. I mean, sure. it's kind of like the analogy would be, you know, the, the emphasis on technology as opposed to what the, the message is. So it's not, you know, it kind of goes back to that um, Marshall McLuhan idea of the medium is the message, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's just like if you get obsessed with technology and you lose that focus of what they're actually, what's mm -hmm. been presented, mm -hmm. then, you know, there's really no hope for that viewer, no. <laughs> you know. You're still going to get people who want that kind of slow burning work yeah, you know, and have that interest and yeah. I think that's still there. Oh absolutely. And I, and, I think, absolutely. and I think, you know, people react and respond to the lack of like um, you know, the ability to sit in a quiet gallery. Mm -hmm. you know, and then someone will just open up another gallery mm -hmm. and then it'll it'll tide will change again and we'll go back to that. Yeah. So it's just all that it's just part of the kind of fluidity of what the art world is. Yeah. But I think it is difficult in a, like in an art fair environment, you know, to it's probably more difficult to present a stand like that that's really considered <coughs> and mm. quiet and contemplative and, and pared back, and, you know, rather mm. than you know trying to kind of I guess create this spectacle and mm. stand out above the crowd, you know, in an art fair because it's mm. such you know, you know, it's like a visual clutter, you know, it's quite mm. like because we were, you know we were talking about this I think was it last night. People often ask me like doing art fairs or I'll come back from an art fair or something like so what were the standouts and it's so hard to remember because mm. everything sort of ends up blending into one mm. and um, it's difficult to know what the kind of strategy is like, I like that kind of taking it back instead of trying to push it and be the, the loudest and the, you know, mm. the, the, I think actually it can work better the other way around yeah. you know, the, the quiet mm. really nicely considered stands are the ones that's, that, that I remember more mm. you know, in the end the slow burners you know, that creep up on you and by the end of it they're, they're the ones you really think 